Hi, this is going to be an interesting one. Well, interesting from a historical perspective for me anyway. Microsoft have just announced that they've open sourced the original GW Basic from 1983. I'm not sure which version it... Actually, did GW Basic even have versions back then? Oh God, I can't remember. It's been so long ago, but they just open sourced it. <laughs> Absolutely fantastic. So it's on the GitHubs over here. And let's have a look. I thought we'd just open some of this source code and have a look at the original source code because I um, th that's where I got my start using GW Basic uh, in terms of programming. And uh, of course, then I, I went on to uh, Quick Basic and Quick Basic 4.5. I wrote a ton of stuff, including uh, commercial software with Quick Basic 4.5. And then I went on to uh, Microsoft Basic Professional Development System, PDS uh, 7.1. Hands up if you remember. Uh, Microsoft Basic PDS 7.1, which included all sorts of uh, libraries for like uh, window, like um, it's kind of like you know text-based window user interfaces and all sorts of stuff like that. So leave it in the comments if you uh, were a, a Basic PDS fanboy like I was. I sold a couple of uh, commercial products and then I kind of uh, went off Basic. I moved into uh, Ball and Pascal. Uh, for DOS, and then I orig and then I moved on to then when Windows was a thing, I moved on to Delphi for Windows, um, and yeah, it's fascinating. And if you don't know, uh, Altium, who I used to uh, work for, that was originally written in uh, Ball and Pascal as well. And then when they released the Windows versions, they moved over to Delphi, and for many years um, they had a lot of issues because uh, of the Delphi um, environment. I believe they've ported most of it over. Anyway, that's just a little. Um, Altium historical uh, perspective there, but yeah, anyway, um, it's in 8088 uh, assembly language, little historical uh, context, there you go, <laughs> men at work topped the US uh, charts with Down Under, Dustin Hoffman was in Tootsie, um, Return of the Jedi came out, War Games, fantastic, uh, 83. And uh, Chris Hemworth was born there. Ronald Reagan was president. <laughs> Margaret Thatcher, the Iron Lady, was UK's Prime Minister. This is absolutely fantastic. Anyway, um, where's the source code? Uh, this it's 100% assembly language. Why assembly? Why didn't they use? When developing on for mainframe computer developers, sometimes they would use higher level languages like Fortran, Lisp, COBOL, blah, blah, blah. But compilers were often hugely expensive, rarely generated efficient code, and were generally unavailable for the space or performance constraints. Um, was this source translated? This source was translated. Each of the assembly source files contains a header stating this was translated. Since the instruction set ISA of the early processors using home and personal computers weren't spectacularly different from one another, Microsoft was able to generate a substantial amount of code for a port from the sources of a master implementation. Okay, so that's interesting. So they didn't, so they had a translation program to generate this assembly code? Hmm, if you know more details about that, please post it in the comments uh, down below. But anyway, um, this won't be an analysis because I haven't done uh, 8088 assembly language uh, for like 30 years. <laughs> I did a bit of it and I, I forget all of it. So yeah, anyway, um, I've downloaded it from the GitHubs here. So, and here it is. Let's load her up. So we've got ASM, source files, uh, probably some header files, yeah, header files. What else have we got? Security, MD, no idea what that is. Let's sort by type, all the ASM and headers. So here it is, here we go. Um, I assume that GW main is the main one. So let's go, by the way, yeah, I am not a, like, <laughs> programming's not my thing. Um, so yeah, I'm just bumming around here for old time kicks. Here it is. This translation was created 10th of February, 1983, version by version four. That's what they were talking about. Radix 8, uh, to be safe, I have no idea. <laughs> Segment public, um, include bin trap, I assume that is, dot H, um, GW main copied from dot Mac. So is dot Mac, is that where, what they were made, like a higher, that's the higher level thing that they were doing? And then they were kind of, 
uh, recompiling that because, of course, they released um, a basic for many different um, uh, you know, operating systems. Look at this. I love it. Copyright 1975 by Bill Gates and Paul Allen. Originally written on the PDP-10 from February 9th to April 9th, 1975. Bill Gates wrote a lot of stuff. Paul Allen wrote a lot of other stuff and fast code. Monty Davidov, for those who aren't aware, he's the... Uh, one of the uh, original uh, founders of Microsoft and he sold his, I can't remember what uh, percentage he had in Microsoft at the time, but uh, yeah, he um, sold out uh, really early. I believe, or was he? No, no, I th might be thinking of the Apple story. Anyway, Monty Davidov, is certainly he famously, um, although obscurely famously, um, yes, he wrote the math package uh, for GW Basic because apparently um, Bill and Paul were like too busy uh, writing uh, stuff. This has felt like the original Altair, like was it the Altair stuff? And uh, which they started, of course, they didn't start with GW Basic. It was originally um, Altair was their first one. So a lot of this code would have uh, come from there and been uh, ported over. But yeah, anyway, they didn't have time to write the floating point math package. Um, maths. Australian, not that American math rubbish. I kind of uh, in the habit of saying math these days. Don't know why. Maths. <laughs> Monty Davidov wrote the maths package. Um, F4i.mac. There you go. So anyway, yeah, but he, he wasn't around after that in uh, Microsoft that I'm aware of. But anyway, um, here we go. X list, don't know what these are. The for FE extended tokens. I... <laughs> Zenith 8086. Um, no, we're not on a Zenith. We're not a Tetra. What's that? CPM 86. Hal. <laughs> the Hal 9000. This is great. Toshiba. That's got to be Toshiba. So I'm assuming that these are different target platforms. Number of text pages. Anyway, interesting. There's not comments on everything. So. Okay, I've got externals. There's no comments on any of those. The following block of externals was added on December 19th, 1982, when bin trap was split up after the freeze of GW Basic version 1. This split up was not reflected in the blah. See, see Tom Corbett. <laughs> Leave it in the comments if you know who Tom Corbett is. See Tom Corbett if you have any questions. <laughs> Maybe we can still find Tom and we can ask him. Good on you, Tom. <laughs> the following externals are defined. Uh, the reserve word table are in another module. Consequently, many things must be declared external. Uh, all of these things are in code segments, so I guess they couldn't make it as, as modular as they wanted. They just, ah, external everything. She'll be right. No worries. Uh, since the dispatch table is no longer, bin trap may be addressed. I, like, the comments are the interesting stuff. I don't care about the code. Like, I do not remember um, assembly, 8086 assembly. I used to do a bit of it, and I just don't remember a damn thing. Um, <laughs> it's been way too long. 8086 versions for stack entries to be an even length, so stack accesses won't cross word boundaries. Yes, 8086 would be different to the... eight. 808, although I thought the 808, I thought they were the same, except the 8088 had an 8-bit ex, external interface. Um, but what that wouldn't change the stack access, would it? Hmm, leave it in the comments down below if you know. I like I thought it was just like little like external access. The actual um, assembly for them shouldn't be any different. Uh, so that's from my memory anyway. Eh. This routine is called to reset the stack if basic is externally stopped and then restarted. Right. Illegal file name. Okay, so here's some... Oh, no. Okay, yeah, so here's a Dur, Dur Mac. I have uh, no idea what that is. Um, so the, I assume, like these are links to some of the uh, strings that they would have had. So, of course, you know, when the GW Basic responds with something, it has that text string stored somewhere. Wow, there's a, like, <laughs> look at this guy. Like, there is a lot of code. There is a lot of, wow. I didn't realize that GW Basic had so much code. What was the, like, the uh, binary file size of GW Basic? Don't, don't remember. Don't remember. But, uh, like, some of the, like, some of the original basics, they were very lean and mean. 
So anyway, yeah. Um, as to uh, like Paul Allen writing the fast <laughs> other stuff and fast code, but um, of course Bill is famous for writing fast code. In fact, for many decades, I do believe he held um, the record for the fastest sort routine or something like that. Please correct me down below if I'm wrong. But uh, yeah, he he came up when he was at uh, Harvard or wherever. Um, yeah, I think he came up with a. Uh, a routine that was um, still like the fastest routine decades later or something. It was some sort of sort, uh, some sort of sort uh, based problem or something like that. So yeah, Bill can certainly write fast code if he wants to, but look at it all. Look at it all. Wow. This is a huge amount of assembly code. Wow. How much pizza was consumed to write this? <laughs> so so this was generated code would it have come would the comments have been copied over from the original whatever higher level stuff that they did or whatever I, i'm not i'm not sure what the deal is but look there there are uh, like you know it was obvious oh yeah it's obvious what exchange does here but um coerce the final value there really uh, as well as double precision gives strings a type mismatch um, you know, there's lots of, like, they're commenting almost every line there, which which you have to do in assembly, because, you know, it's like, like, some things are obvious, um, but, you know, if you're fluent in, in assembly, then uh, some things are obvious, but, uh, yeah, this is why you get, like, comments per line and stuff like that. Some of the stuff at the top didn't, but once you get into the nitty-gritty of it, possible on go subs, ah, go sub, those were the days... Octal constant, hexa constants. Anyway, look, I, I'm not going to go through all the code because this is just insane. But wow. So this is just the main routine. This would be the disk routine, would it? Uh, common routines for disk basics. Uh, yep. Any, I'm, I'm, I'm after the comments. The comments are the most fascinating things in stuff like this. So 5.0 handles the while when uh, 80.80 stack is used to put an entry... Format is as follows. There you go. An even length. Yeah, okay. Maybe that's what they're talking about. 8086. They're not talking. Maybe they're talking about the difference between the 8080 and the 8086 slash 8088. Maybe that's the difference. IBM res dot H. So these are all the if defines. Gee, uh, oh, Tom Corbett. Here you go. Here's Tom again. Early employee. At Microsoft. It's bin trap. So here's the maths routine written by Monty Davidov. Doesn't say he wrote it. Once again, like comment virtually every line because you have to. Otherwise, you know, if you go back in there, you'd have have no clue, really. It's it's much more difficult to uh, even, you know, somebody fluent in assembly could go back in here. Like I look at my old assembly code. I did it in like my 1K uh, video, my video number 1000, or was it 1024? Uh, yeah, it was 1024, where I looked at um, some old original PIC assembly language uh, code. So I'll link that one in. Uh, if you haven't seen, I I, I don't know. I can't go in and recall PIC assembly language. Like, I used to be good at it, and now it's like, it's, it's just Klingon. Talking about the Mantissa. Good on you, Monty. Looks like he writes, looks like Monty writes good code. I wonder what Monty's doing these days. Screen driver. So they're just like all the... That's just like scrolling routines and stuff. Wow. Line feed terminator and line terminator. That's to do with the RAM keyboard support. Why is there keyboard support variables in RAM and stuff like that? I don't know what DB is. Initialize the jump vector for exit to MS-DOS. Requires that exit is made through the segment prefix table. <laughs> I'm sure it's bringing, this is bringing back a lot of memories for a lot of people. The following code scans a CPM command line for BASIC. Wow. Yeah, so it's obviously, you know, ported over from other other platforms. That's interesting. There's a routine called It's a 86. So what are they, are they detecting that it's an 8086? Resonant initialization for Intel 8086. <laughs> and it gets discarded. Yeah. Love it. So they have to detect what processor type they're using, and oh, that's it. 
This is the keyboard routine. Check this out. They've got a nice little uh, text flow chart here <laughs> to uh, describe the operation of this thing. Very nice commenting. Love it. So yeah, I... <laughs> I can't go through all the code, but some of the comments, I'm sure there's like some classic uh, comments in here. If you can uh, find them, please leave it in the comments down below. But yeah, classic from 1975 by Bill Gates and Paul Allen. And don't forget Monty Davidoff. He wrote the uh, maths package. And uh, they, of course, famously uh, had to write this on the PDP-11. They had to simulate it. They had to simulate the uh, 8080 because that was used in the Altair computer. And of course, they phoned up um, Ed Roberts, who designed the Altair, and and they uh, said, "Oh, look, we've we've got a basic for that runs on the Altair," and they didn't have it. Of course, I was just you know they knew they could probably write one, but they were just you know uh, I'm spinning a yarn saying, "Oh yeah, we've got this." And he said, "Oh yeah, come down." Okay, so they they started writing the damn thing. And of course, they famously uh, couldn't, they didn't have a machine to run it on. So they had to simulate it and they didn't know on, on the PDP-10 uh, mainframe and they didn't know if it would actually work on the real hardware because they didn't have the real hardware. And then when they, uh, I Paul flew down there because Bill, he was like, the older, more mature looking of the two. And he flew down to Albuquerque where MITS was, um, who uh, designed the Altair and uh, made it. And uh, so he flew down there with the paper tape to load in the basic. And of course, uh, they forgot the bootloader routines. So Paul Allen had to write the bootloader routine on the plane. So when he turned up and they put the paper tape in and amazingly it actually worked and of course they got the deal um i think paul allen was technically an employee of mits but bill gates claims he never was an employee an employee of mit mits um so yeah they were anyway microsoft and that's how they got this start of course uh, the paper tape. And of course, Bill Gates published uh, the famous, I can't forget, I forget the publication it was in, but the famous open letter to hobbyists where he uh, basically said, look, don't steal our paper tape. You know, we put thousands, even though they got the computer time for free because it was at the university. Um, they said, look, we put, you know, thousands, all this computer time cost money because back then mainframe computer time cost a lot of money. So they've put all, you know, tens of thousands, however many or hundreds of thousands of dollars worth of computer time uh, he claimed into this thing and everyone was just uh, at the at the computer meetups and stuff they were just handing out copies of the paper tape of Microsoft basic and things like that so yeah the famous open letter to hobbyists um, that's a classic go and look that one up but anyway yeah that's uh, that's fascinating I knew they actually wrote it in a high level thing and then sort of like targeted it down um, so if you've got more details on that uh, please leave it in the comments down below I'd like to know the details but anyway i i just love that good on microsoft for uh releasing the uh for open you know open sourcing oh, i i don't think it's for i'm not sure what the license i think he mentioned something in the article about the license or something anyway um anyway they've released the source code it's on the githubs <laughs> Absolutely fantastic. The original GW Basic. I wonder if they'll ever release Quick Basic or Basic PDS. Um, that'd be fantastic, but yeah. Anyway, <laughs> Bill Gates and Paul Allen. <laughs> Legends. And Monty Davidov. Come on. Let's not forget poor old Monty. Anyway, catch you next time.